Russia wait in the next round. We've seen one battle of attrition, if I could call it so. Are we in for a second battle of attrition tonight? Well, let's hope it's a little bit more entertaining for sure. <laughs> um, for me, what... what You're going to drop well, off to sleep, so you didn't sit and me with my bad back. I don't need a second what, opportunity. What concerns me a little bit is both these teams have only conceded uh, one goal and it wasn't in open play. They've both mm. conceded a penalty each, so they don't concede too many. So that's telling me it might be a little bit of a stalemate. Obviously, Croatia are a lot more fluent attacking. I think Denmark rode their luck, certainly against Peru, where they scored late. I think uh, Schmeichel made six saves yeah. in, in the game, which was a, a record for a, a Danish team in a World Cup. So, um, you know, I'm not quite sure Denmark have got enough. The, the coach promises not to be defensive like his last game, like mm. it was against France. He's telling us he's going to attack and it's going to be a bit more entertaining. So let's see if he's true to his word. That's what he's saying, Eugene. But do you change the template, especially in the round of 16 game with so much riding on that game? You've, you've played one way of football right up till here. Are you going to change it and leave yourselves open? You never know, especially with the quality in the Croatia side. I just feel that in this World Cup, teams have really accepted that other teams are better. So, they normally tend to sit back, like you see the previous game. So, I just have a feeling that the Danes will do the same thing today. Now, a lot of what Denmark are doing revolves around Christian Eriksen. He's been their standout player uh, in a sense. He's run the most number of kilometers than any player in this competition as well. But we already have seen in this competition that if you're overtly reliant on one player and the others don't, don't support, then we've seen Messi's gone home. We've seen uh, Ronaldo go home and now we're seeing uh, others go home as well. Yeah, I mean, Eriksen is, is vital to Denmark's play, I think. Obviously, I think he's comparable stats with um, even Modric is probably better. Not, not scored as many goals, but obviously scored, scored a good goal himself on the edge of the box against Australia. Um, but they're more of a team, Denmark, than the other teams you've mentioned. They don't solely rely on Eriksen, but he is vital. You know, he's the one with the quality. The red, most of them are, you know, seven out of ten, nice and efficient, know what to do going in the right places at the right time, all fit. But he's the one that's got the, the extra bit of class, the ability. You know, that's the reason why he plays in the Premier League and most of the others don't, apart from obviously Schmeichel, the goalkeeper. Mm. So he's, he's the one with, it, with the X factor, if you like. But they're, they're still not solely relying on them, more of a team. OK. They have uh, Christian Eriksen. Croatia have Modric. They have Perisic. They have Rakitic. That's three really classy, classy players out there. And... And perhaps that's one of the reasons why uh, they topped their group uh, as well, winning all three in a row as well. Yeah, uh, they've been doubted, obviously, the golden generation, that's what they call them. Uh, going up front, they've got great players. They've got Mandzukic as well up front, Perisic, and they've got players who can score all around. Berkovic, yeah, Luka Modric, mm. Rakitic, they all can score and they're all creative players. So, going up front, they are, they are very, very... Okay, since you are talking about Croatia, we have got... Uh, the lineups for this game, uh, they've just come in and we're going to see them on our screens right now. Ashley, this is uh, the same uh, 11 he's gone with, which started the game against Argentina. So you know that this is exactly the style they're going to play with. Modric, their key player, and hopefully Mandzukic starts putting away some of those chances that are coming his way. Yeah, I mean, there's a real uh, stability look about this side. You know, there's not been too many chops and changes right throughout the tournament. I think that was one of the... The things that weaken the Germans with so many different changes. I think they've used 20 different players, something like that, the Germans. So that gives them stability. Obviously, the, the front four are, are, are hugely influential going forward. Rakitic also pops up on the edge of the box. But the two midfielders, Ratic and, and Borisovic, are the ones that just sit and allow the four to attack. But they look like they've got multiple goal scorers, like I say. Mm. They're all familiar with each other. There's a lot of understanding. So they look a, a tough unit to crack at the minute. How do you look at this uh, one panning out, Eugenson, uh, especially with that a lot of people are building this as Ericsson versus Modric, but you just can't do that. There are other players as well uh, in, in the Croatia lineup. Do Croatia just have too much quality to ultimately win it and move into the quarterfinals? Uh, yeah, they've got, they've got creativity. They've got a lot of creativity in them, but uh, it j depends on uh, the Danish how, how well they uh, execute the game plan. I think if, if they can really, really executed, then it might just upset them. Mm. Ashley, uh, can I get you to give us a prediction, perhaps with some goals involved in it as well? Well, we're hoping for goals, uh, multiple scores. I can't see Denmark um, stopping Croatia. They are fairly defensive, but I think there's too much quality. Um, I hope for an early goal, so I'm going to uh, go 2 nil Croatia. 2 nil Croatia is what Ashley says. Are you going to agree with him or are you going to say one nil? I'll agree with him. Okay, you always <laughs> agree with the coach. Okay. <laughs>